It's Friday. That means it's uh, time to visit from uh, with uh, with Chris Egan. Uh, we're on the Puck Sports Studios, built by Limbach Lumber, family owned and serving the Northwest since 1930. The Northwest premier supplier of specialized lumber and moldings. Summer is here. That means deck and fence season. Contact the folks at Limbach Lumber at two zero six seven eight two. 3487. Visit them online at limbacklumber.com. Puck Sports Studios built by Limback Lumber. Chris Egan's with us uh, every Friday. Team USA shirt, the Paris uh, Olympics hat. He has been jet setting all over the great state of Washington. His Friday appearance uh, could not happen without the great folks at Fat Zach's Pizza. Fat Zach's Pizza, three locations. In Sumner, downtown Puyallup, South Hill, home of the original No Big Dill Pickle Pizza. You can book three of their food trucks for catering, birthday parties, graduations, corporate events, whatever you want. Uh, voted best in the sound two years in a row for the best pizza. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Fat Zach's Pizza. Can you just tell everyone what your schedule is has been in the last 72 hours? It's unreal. Well, let's let's go back seventy two hours ago, uh, Puckett. I had to uh, I had to write eighteen stories for the Paris Olympics. I had to write these because we have editors at King Five that are waiting, and they've got a week before I head to Paris, so they had to have these stories. So I basically pulled a couple two two straight twenty four hour shifts, and then I'm like, okay. My son is playing for the Edmonton Riverhawks, who is having a great season. They are they have a series in Wenatchee against the Wenatchee Apple Sox. Um, so I get the stories done. So we get that. The stories are out of the way, so now I can go have some fun. Plus, it's anniversary week. We can get into that a little bit more. Um, so the wife and I decided to get a night at the uh, Post Hotel in Leavenworth, which Time out for people who don't know that hotel in Leavenworth. It's probably one of the most exclusive hotels in the state, probably one of the most expensive hotels in the state. I, I would like to know someone who has tried to book a room there. Apparently, I, had, I need to drop your name. Like, how how far in advance did we do this, or did you get lucky? Uh, you know, the wife's pretty good. I think we got lucky, um, and then – you know, you do have to go about six months in advance, but I'm yeah, oh, at least. That, and, and this this show, the Puckett Podcast, uh, Chris Egan, King Five. You know, nothing Chris. is sponsored by the Post. We're paying full price, like everybody else. As I as I say this, it is worth every penny. If you're looking just to get away, put the phone away, kind of just. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Well, because it's it, because it's no like right. It's one of these places. There is, <clears throat> I know you can sneak it in there, but there's no alcohol on on the property, right? I don't think. Well, or, yeah, no, but and I hope it doesn't get us in trouble for. But you can hey, people bring it, right? Mel, um, yeah, Mel sneaks it in all the time. Yeah. Oh, but then there's no what? What's the cell phone use there? Uh, very limited cell phone use. You're not really yeah. supposed to have them out. You know, there yeah. obviously there's no kids and. Yes. What we love is there's a whole there's there's a great little pool and sun deck, but then there's this sauna station. So you basically go to eight different stations. It's a, it's a cleansing station, if you mm -hmm. will, Buck. And you know, uh, so basically, you go from one sauna to another sauna that's literally like 180 degrees, and you can, I can barely stay. And then you go into I don't know if you've ever done this, the cold plunge. Oh yeah. Oh, my wife loves it. And I am in there and she, I'm li literally in there for about 10 seconds. And she's just like, you got to toughen it out. You've got to breathe. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, isn't this supposed to be a vacation? But yeah, so I do that. And then we get into the next sauna. And I feel like I was almost going to pass out because I spent so much time in the cold plunge. But I don't know what it is, Buck. I'm telling you what, it's just, it's, it's a great little getaway. It's quiet. Yeah. It's peaceful. And so this is where I say in the last 72 hours, our son is playing in Wenatchee. I tell my wife, you know what? Our dinner break is going to go watch him play uh, a Wenatchee Apple Sox game. And she's like, yep, I'm all in. I'm all in. So we do that. We go watch him. And he didn't pitch that night. So we go back to the Post Hotel. We hang out. We, we have fun. We have a nice big breakfast. We have a nice big lunch. Everything is telling us he's not going to pitch last night. And so we're like, we should probably just head home, head home to Puyallup. We've got a busy day. I've got to work. She's got to work. And this is where I tell everybody, and we'll do this for all of our kids. You know what? We're thinking, what if he does pitch? 
We don't want to miss this opportunity. You know what? Let's let's put our kid in front of getting home because getting home was more convenient. Watching the game, man, I'm going to be driving through Blewett Pass at, at midnight. But that's okay if it's if it's watching your kids. So at the last minute, we're like, you know what? Let's go, let's go to one at you and watch another game. And it was a fantastic game of baseball. Back and forth, two really good teams. We're down four to three in the seventh inning. And there we see number two, Austin Egan, warming up. My wife runs to get another Pinot Grigio from the Wenatchee uh, concession stand because anytime he pitches, she has to have at least three drinks. Oh, because she just can't handle it as a no, mom. She, she yeah. gets nervous. She paces behind me. <laughs> I can't. I can't drink puck because you got to drive. I've got to drive home. I've got the blue. But you, but, but we got Mel Egan, you know, a realtor of the, of the stars, <laughs> is out there drinking a whole bottle of Pinot Gris for God's sakes. And then not to mention, we've got a couple fans in. God bless him. I had a Wenatchee fan that wanted to befriend me and talk Olympics, yeah. and he's sitting next to me. Oh, I'm excited to watch Austin. I'm like, and you're like, I'm here to watch my kid. Yeah. Shut up, Larry. I am not a – when my kid's playing, I need to really kind of ISO in, whether this yeah. is my daughter in tennis, my son in basketball. Yeah. It's, not, watch. it's not time for me to communicate with anybody. So yeah, I, I got you. So he goes in, walks the first batter, a guy from Washington State. So these are good – Wenatchee's lineup is like – nine division one kids They're these heavy. are so yeah and that's what i was gonna this is the uh the summer college ball right yeah. these these are all these are all college kids are it's correct called the west coast league and yeah. i'm telling everybody that's listening to this podcast watching this podcast it is baseball at its greatest we've now watched okay. the bellingham bells we've been up to edmonton where they get seven to eight thousand a game we we're at wenatchee we've been at ridgefield portland pickles have a team we're going to be heading to victoria to watch the harbor cats it's just <laughs> It's all college kids, but gosh, these parks just do it right. It's just, yeah, it's fun. It's very romantic. There's, you know, yeah. I'll say this: I love baseball, and when you sit in these parks at night and and you watch the game, it's just awesome. So he walks the first batter, and then the, you know steps up this big kid from the Yukon Huskies, you know, and Mel's. I can feel her pacing behind. Wait, me. there's a guy from the Yukon Huskies on the Wenatchee team? On the Wenatchee team? Oh, there. I mean, plus these kids come from all over to play on these crazy, teams, uh, and they. And they're just exciting baseball. He sure. gets him in a he gets him in a double play. So mm -hmm. up the middle, turn two, next batter uh, throws a slider on uh, and gets him strikes him out. Does his job, pitches one inning. He's out of there. A wife can sit down and enjoy. And they ended up Edmonton got uh, three runs in the top of the ninth inning. Ended up winning it. And you know what? It was one of those moments where like. We'll never have a chance to do this again. It was so cool to be there, even if it was only three. Was batters. he the winning pitcher then? He did not get the winning pitcher because okay. the winning pitcher, I think, was uh, whoever pitched the eighth inning. He okay. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. He was in the seventh. Okay. Uh, but, you know, it, and then I'm just like thinking, God, how cool is this? And for the whole ride home, you know, we're talking to our other kids and we're talking to each other. And before you know it, we're, we're home in Puyallup. And it wasn't that big of a deal. But that's Were uh, the other kids there? Uh, no, they were home watching it on TV. So what, what they were watching the game. Yeah. Yeah. On what, where do you watch the, where do you watch the Edmonton? What are they? Well, the river I'm cats? You what this West coast league is absolutely phenomenal. They, they stream every single game. How about this? The all-star game, which will be taking place in Bellingham will be on the MLB network. No. Yes, the MLB Network will be broadcasting the West Coast League All Star Game. Where do you find the West Coast League? Like, where do you where, where is? It? I mean, uh, I, I probably I just search it. Just, yeah, you would just search West Coast League, and then every night they put up all the games, and then you just hit on that game. And, is it free? And it's free. And here's the thing I love about this bucket. Oh, I don't we watch. talk about this this old school baseball. Here we are in Wenatchee. You know, we're having Dorito. We're having tacos out of dorito bags yeah how dogs you need to tell people that how how was it that was phenomenal if you've never had a loaded taco um it comes in a doritos bag this is at when in wenatchee's ballpark <laughs> and then great. they just dump meat in there they dump sour cream in there they dump salsa in there awesome. they dump uh i mean they just dump onions in there and they hand you a fork and say Go get it. How was it? Was it good? It was phenomenal. Yeah, I, uh, it, it was. I, I, I was almost to the point where I was licking it out of the bag. It was that good. <laughs> and, and then this was – I had that two nights before so I could have a beer because the wife was going to be driving that night. So, to, yeah. you know, throw down a Rainier beer uh, mm. with one of those. Oh, my God. I mean, you're, you're living the dream right there. It was a great day. 
great day. But so these these parks, what I love about it, Puck, is when you log on to these these games, they have a lot of old time announcers, like seventy or eighty year old guys, or they have the Jason Puckett, Chris Egan's from Wazoo or PLU that are trying to become broadcasters. Okay. So when actually had the young Jason Puckett from Wazoo, you know, like Good. giving the play by play, doing all the sponsors. Uh, Edmonton has this 80 year old guy that used to do play by play for the Montreal Expos back in the day. So really? He, oh yeah. So the, they, it's, <laughs> it's they actually do a pretty good job with all this stuff. So I'm going to go yeah. check. I'm going to go check it out. So is he going to be in the all-star game? He will not be in the all-star game. He's had a good, he's had a good ride, but yeah. you know, it's tough for a reliever to make the all-star. Game. Yeah. And then how long does this, when does this conclude? I would like the uh, end of play, August playoffs are in, uh, First two weeks of August, and I think one of the I think the huh. defending champs are the Corvallis Knights, which is the team loaded basically with Oregon State Beavers and Oregon Ducks. Yeah. Uh, John Ryan, kicker for the Seahawks, owns sure. the Portland Pickles. That's his right. Team. Um, is the, the team in West Seattle the um, the Fish Sticks? Are they a part of this? Different league, different league. A oh, different league. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So different, different, different leagues. So. Does he get paid for this? No, no, they do not get paid. Uh, okay. But you start thinking about these leagues and, uh, I mean, just we're, we're trying to get our family from the Post Hotel to a Wenatchee game back to Puyallup to Victoria and how complicated that is. Now we're thinking, how do you get these 45 kids into Wenatchee? Then you've got to leave Wenatchee, get on a ferry and get into Victoria. And then when you're done in Victoria, you've oh got, got to get them God. all back up to Edmonton. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, so they've got to go. Uh, what are they on a bus? So they got to get out of Wenatchee. They drive back to Seattle. Yeah. Then what? They're going. Are they going on the Clipper? I think they may be going on the Clipper. I don't even know that. They're you guys are, and then so you're important. So we're, we're it's Friday. We're recording this on Friday, but you are leaving Saturday morning, then to go up to Victoria to watch them play again. And then back, yeah. And then back home, back home later on, on. Saturday. So I got to work Sunday, and we got uh, we got a shower. The daughter's got a wedding shower coming. You know, up. you can just watch it on the TV. Just watch it on the on the the West Coast you app. Can do that, Puck, but you don't get this. You, you watch on TV. You don't got your wife pacing behind you with a Pinot Grigio. You don't got oh. old man Larry the left of you. Is, you know, is she like? Is she like like when she's pacing? She's always been a pacer when he's pitched. Yeah, she gets a little nervous. Yeah, she just. Yeah. Uh, Oh, there, yeah. it's we've talked about it before that, that watching your son or if your daughter for softball pitch is just is so nerve wracking. And then she'll just she'll like grab me hard like, oh, he's he's warming up. He's warming up. I'm like, just settled. <laughs> she mutter like my I mean, I see, I don't really know what my wife acts like during it because I'm in I'm coaching. So I'm in the dugout. But I will I'll look over if he if my son's on the mound, I'll look over and. Or I'll talk to her after the game, and the first, the first thing that umpire was terrible. <laughs> like, oh, I don't think he got every call wrong. First time, it really I, seemed like he he really seemed like he was squeezing him out there. Uh, my <laughs> wife actually looked at me last night because I felt like one of the umpires must be uh, from Wenatchee. Uh, yeah, I, I watched two games and I and I, I watched Edmonton did not get one call from this umpire. In, in two days. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure. I'm, and so yeah. I've, I'm usually very pro of, you know, officials. I yeah. give them the, I give them the doubt, you know, the baseball literally hits the bag at first base, pops up in the air about 15 feet. <laughs> Foul ball. I think everybody was in more shock. People are like, uh, excuse me, sir, the, the the bag is in play. So our coach can't even say, a manager can't even say anything because I think he's been warned too much about this. Yeah. Um, and then, so finally, and it's it's the Wenatchee crowd, so nobody's everybody's just kind of been like, oh, interesting. So finally, it's quiet. If the ball hits the bag, that is fair. <laughs> was that somebody from the stands? That was me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a personality. You can't do that stuff. 
<laughs> they know who you are even i mean do people recognize you in actually a big oh, deal yes. yeah, yeah they right? did. I was, people were coming up and giving me pens and wondering why do they I get king there. five do, do we get right or they have their own yeah, tv no, stations over there five and yeah. apparently uh we're, apparently they want me to come over and do more high school sports and what actually they didn't like oh that's right because you got you're in, in in lovely did we stop in Kashmir? so I can't even remember the place we went in Wenatchee, which I, I, I fault myself for this, but we found You didn't go to Rusty's, did you? No, we didn't go to Rusty's because here's why, Puckett. We had this big lunch at the Post Hotel with fried carrots and quinoa. <laughs> First of all, no one likes quinoa. I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody pushes quinoa on me one more time, <laughs> God, it's just, it's just not good. I don't like it. Oh, I know. I don't. I don't understand quinoa at all myself either. But uh, yeah. no. So we. I feel. But we. I told the wife. I said Puckett would want us to go to Rusty's, and she's like, oh, so "We got to get to the game, honey." And it's you, so I, good. I know. And it was. Hard but it takes because, forever to get your meal, though. That's you, true. Well, and the other point is, we're going to a ballpark, so I already know I'm going to eat bad there. So I'm like, I probably can't go too bad. Meals. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I justify it for myself. Yeah, you're 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 already eating a bag full of Doritos with meat and cheese and salsa. No, <laughs> you want to? Yeah. Well, and fuck, double this it is down. how. I mean, when actually must have some decent King Five viewers because I'm watching sure. my kids going in, and literally one guy turns around, Egan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mariners, eleven runs, eleven runs. <laughs> I love that they give the update. Yeah, yeah. I go. Uh, they, Thank you, sir. He goes, yep. I don't know why. I told everybody this team's going to hit. And I go, well, I'm, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did, sir. <laughs> Which leads me to believe. Oh, and you're just trying to like, hey, and you, and knowing you, because you're so nice. And, 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 and I know you appreciate this when people recognize you and tell you that they like you, they like what you do. And you don't ever say, you know, you don't turn your back on them. And, you know, but there are times, like if you're watching your kid, you, you kind of, it's okay to sometimes you want to be left alone. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very, it's a human trait and behavior, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Do you ever just tell someone, hey, can you leave me alone, please? <laughs> uh, I have not yet, but we were close at the uh, post hotel. It's, uh, oh, no. Coming out of one of the steam rooms and uh, a couple of people wanted just to talk pickleball. Uh, and I'm like... <laughs> You know, and has, and has your naked. Uh, speaking yeah, of pickleball, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in my robe, and I'm like, let's uh, uh, let's take a break from this. But interesting, I, pocket. I want to get your take on this because sure. here we see we see this Mariners team exploding again. Okay, and are we somewhat to blame the media? Like you, you see the New York media through the years, and just how they're they're tough. They're tough, and for the first time, I feel like. This Mariners team had a bad homestand, and we were finally – everybody was saying how it is. I don't think anybody was sugarcoating it. And I'm wondering if if they responded. I'm not saying the media – I'm not taking credit for the bats igniting and, and this win streak that's going on, but uh, sometimes in the Pacific Northwest, we're a little, we're a little friendly and a little yeah. fan friendly, and uh, I don't think there's anything wrong – with with calling it how it is sometimes and that i don't think there's anything i don't think there's anything wrong i don't think there's anything wrong with it I, I i you've been around them enough and, and been around enough professional athletes i just think they take a lot of pride they they don't want to lose right as much as the, as the fan doesn't want this team to lose these guys don't want to lose and they don't want to be embarrassed and and they're very prideful in what they do and and they know the expectations that are on them and uh, i think it's more than fair to be critical of this team i i think at times they they you know, during that stretch, they were playing bad baseball. Yeah, and 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 I'm I was happy and and glad and proud that the fans at home gave it to them. Yeah, because I I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I think the East Coast sometimes gets a bad rap for it. And I'm not going to say that sometimes maybe they take a little bit too far. Sure, but what they do do, it's not like they boo them, and then that's all they do. Like when they play well, no, you know they'll tell you New Yorkers will tell you if you're playing well. You know, people in Philadelphia, they'll tell you if you're doing well. In Boston, uh, they just, they they want effort. And they want effort all the time. And, and I think with how the fans reacted in that homestand, I think was just, I think it was great because I think people are frustrated by them because, you know, for the most part, this organization and this team hasn't won. Mm -hmm. They haven't won from the get-go. And there's a lot of people in this town. There's a lot of baseball fans. They are packing that place out almost every night and they just are so starving 
right? Egan, they're so starving to win and get into the playoffs and do some damage. And this place will explode if they get back in. But but they got to win a series, right? They've they've got to advance. They've got to, you know, it's it's been too long. And I I, th- I think this year the frustration has mounted because of the expectations that I think a lot of people had, and those expectations that were set forth by the ownership group and then also by the front office. That this was the year. Yeah. This was right. We keep delaying it, but this was the year they were gonna. They were going to be aggressive, and they weren't aggressive in the offseason. I think that frustrated everyone. And now, hey, you watch. If they don't do anything at the deadline, you're going to see a very angry fan base. No, and it was interesting. That fan base, yes, and I started off by saying it was the media, and you you make a good point. That fan base, and I worked just a stone's throw away from that stadium, which packed in, uh, I, I want to say, 247,000 yeah. fans in, in nine games, Buck. And yes, Incredible. I understand the Toronto Blue Jays was part of that series, but still, 247 for nine games. Uh, you know, you're know, you well over 30,000 a game there. Um, to see that fan base react how they did, I, I think that was, uh, you know, I, I think that kind of set a little fire under this team. I think I think the couple guys not making the All-Star team set a little fire under this team as well, too. So uh, I, I'm hoping this is all – sometimes you need to go downhill before you go up up a hill. And I, I, I think uh, that series we may look back is what, what kind of fired up this team a little bit. I, I think that – Here's what I would say. I, I think if they, I think if fans didn't react that way, mm-hmm. I think that's a problem because that's yeah. apathy. Yeah. And I think what, what it shows you is that they, they just care. They really do. They, they care. They care. They want them to be good. You know, there's nothing better. I mean, you know this. I mean, the playoffs are fun for the Seahawks. That's great. Uh, but there is nothing like the, the three other sports. When we talk baseball and hockey and and then the NBA when it comes back because of the series, right? You've got games, multiple games in a row and days in a row where they're it's always on. And and that's what's been missing, you know, with the Mariners and, and the baseball fan base. And what was even missing, you know, when they were in it a couple of years ago is because you, you got one game at home. That's it. And, and I want to see a home series. That's why they, they've got to hold on. They've got to win this division so they can actually have a, a home uh, playoff series because then it's, you got several games in a row and the city will be a buzz. And, and you nailed it with the series and how they build up kind of it. Not only do the television stations build up the steam and uh-huh. the radio stations of the storylines, but the, the, the two teams build up their own storylines. We yeah. go back to the to the Kraken, you know, in, in their playoff series, and all of a sudden enemies are made from other teams. Like, oh, sure. God, this guy from Colorado, we hate this guy now. You know, right. and, and right. it's that's what I love about this stuff. So I know. I, I, I just hope maybe those nine games are, are what sparked this team as they move forward, and uh, we'll see. But, yes, they definitely got to do something at the trade deadline. I think uh, – I don't think there's anybody out there that would disagree with that. Right? You know, they, they add something, but you know what, what you've seen again in the, you know, what they've done here in the last, you know, few games, I mean, one, well, the Padres, I'm not going to take anything away what they did against the Padres, right? Yeah, they didn't score. They did. Their offense wasn't on fire, but listen, you had Julio look good in, in one game. Cal Raleigh's been on a heater. Yeah. You know, their pitching staff shut down. What was at that time, one of the red, most red hot teams in the national league uh, offensively. What they did against the Angels in the first game, they should have done that against. The Angels are terrible. Uh, but they, what they really need to do, and it's hard to sweep in a four-game series. They got to win three out of four. Mm-hmm. Okay, they have to. But if, if if they can sweep this team going into the break, rest up, and then, I mean, you'll, will you be in Paris by then when they start with the Astros? I will be leaving for Paris on the 22nd. Okay, so when do what's what's the it's a twenty? Well, our next uh, podcast will be kind of our official Olympic preview. Then it's yeah. After that, you'll see me uh, with the Eiffel Tower behind me. Uh, so you got to get a shot. Speaking of the Eiffel Tower, so I'm I'm I, hold on. are you going to be there? Will you be in town for the uh, the start of that series against Houston? Let me look it up. Hold on, real quick. I want to see if you're going to be in town for that uh, because I'm you know because where you guys are situated, located, it's going to be awesome to sit there. And watch all the fans uh, fly out. So you're leaving the 22nd? Yes. Yeah, you'll be there for Houston because it's the 19th, 20th, and 21st. Okay. I'll be right yeah, there. You, there you go. Go to the beach. Have you seen where the beach volleyball court is in Paris? Right underneath right underneath the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, 
and it's it's getting exciting puck we've got uh we've got 60 plus athletes with ties um and i'm gonna punch up this name here because i do not want to say this wrong and this is what i love about the olympics i got an email yeah from a grandpa and it just <laughs> and it was just awesome um from a, one of the local kids it was a little well she's from here it is okay and puck i mean this if this doesn't make you get the usa going and i okay you got okay on with you um chris I'm writing you about my granddaughter, Samantha Sullivan. And this, this person writing me, by the way, Puck, Jeff, is from Sammamish. He lives in Sammamish, proud Pacific Northwest native. Chris, I'm writing you about my granddaughter, Samantha. She is a member of the USA Women's Rugby Sevens team who have qualified for the Olympics. She's also a captain in the United States Army. She graduated from West Point in 2020 and she is a member of the World Class Athletes Program, and as a result, is representing the United States of America in the Olympics as her current duty assignment. Her father is a retired Green Beret Colonel. Her twin brother is an Airborne Ranger. She has many, many relatives in Washington on both sides of the mountain. We are so excited for this Olympic Games to watch her. <laughs> blah, blah, you know, thank you so much for all your coverage. That's the stuff, Puck, that just like yeah. somebody at work goes, well, I mean, Chris, she's actually from North Carolina. And I'm like, I don't care where she's from. She's from the United States of America. And I'm excited to go cover her. My you play for the cut. You play for the name on the front. <laughs> yes, you do right here. Team USA. So I am fired up about that. I, I, I mean, I'm fired up about life right now. We got great little baseball. Mariners are winning. Yeah. And Puck, here's my Instagram. And, and it's anniversary week. Anniversary week. We can end with that and give a give a shout out to, to Melanie Egan. But oh. first, here's my Instagram lock tip of the week. Everybody. <laughs> I am a master gardener. I have several raised garden beds in the Egan backyard. Wow. This year, the Egan garden is exploding more than ever. I've got zucchini falling off. I've got cucumbers. I got peas. I got onions. I got carrots. I got potatoes popping. I mean, the garden is going crazy. That's you. I just picked that before we got on. Jesus, if, if man. You're, if you're listening, this is just a small zucchini. I've, I've picked at least about 12 of these out of the Egan Garden. Folks, already. he's got a zucchini that's the size of a, uh, uh, looks like a uh, a rugby ball. Yes. Puck, that's coming to the Pucket House. Um, I think it's too big. Isn't it when it gets too big? Isn't it? It's not good. Yeah, a couple things you can do with do it. Do you like zucchini? You can slice it up, slice it up, throw it on the uh, grill, put a little Johnny seasoning on there. Yeah. yeah. Zucchini bread. Zucchini bread. Not a big fan of it. I'd rather go with banana bread. You can chop it up, slice it, dice it, grill it. It's really good. <laughs> Thanks, Ron Popeil. But, Peel. but Puck, here's the secret to garden success in the Pacific Northwest. Manure. It's all about the soil. It oh, is yeah. all about the soil. My mom's garden struggling. Mother-in-law's garden struggling because they went cheap on the soil. Okay, what'd you get? What's the secret I soil? Get, I blend it in there. I get a nice little miracle grow. I get a little the manure stuff. I throw that in there, and I just a lot of blending early on in the fall. I get the top line soil. I put it in that raised bed. <sighs> Things are blowing up. God, when do you have time to garden? And, and, and do you have people that do this for you? No, that's or you actually do this? This is my getaway. I love a little gardening. And then you the sunflower them. seeds are blowing up, Puck, and I'm just I'm a little God. nervous to go to Paris because. They're going to ruin. It's going to be I'm, ruined. I'm basically putting this all in the hands of my wife, who's very busy at real So I'm just hopefully my daughter can just handle the garden. Yeah. We did not do a garden this year. We normally do. This year we did not do it. I don't know why. Well, yeah, you're busy. You got your coaching, you're coaching I, I, Lily. I, I guess, but yeah, it's, it's sitting on the side of the house and there's weeds growing in it. And I need to, and boy, the, our, our yard has gone to, gone to shit. I mean, I've really got to get in there. There's it's, it's really bad. right? Well, now. this is the point of, this is like, this is lawns are like life. Sometimes let's just say this. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people don't want to jump on the scale and they'll say, oh, I'll put some sweats on. That's not yeah. lawn. It gets a little brown. You're like, eh, I'm just, I'm going to leave it. That's like putting sweats on. Yeah. Got to get, get that water on. Yeah, I know, but water's so expensive here. 
That's true. It is yeah. going up, and everybody says conserve water. Yeah. I'm Aren't we con- supposed to conserve water this week? Wasn't there a water shortage? Were you got, is that not register in Pierce County? Um, I've got a little creek behind the house, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think you can up. tap into the creek. <laughs> I don't think that's. I don't think you can do that, sir. No, I don't think that is. No, I'm not for anybody. Uh, well, yes, you I'm are. Not, I don't, don't know. You could be. <laughs> I'm not tapping into the creek. All part. right. So you you got. Um, we're Victoria on Saturday. It's uh, it is anniversary week. Is it all week? Or are we done because of the post hotel? Uh, officially, the anniversary is Saturday. Um, so oh, so we think, still got more. And, I mean, I think the post really was our anniversary day i will say this we've now had a couple trips to the post for anniversary loved them i gotta go Uh, we did cabo with the family once on an anniversary a memory we will not forget uh we did cabo private side one year without the kids loved it but uh what do you mean when you say the private side like the nude side or what no i mean you've got the you've got the the pacific ocean side where you can swim in the beach in cabo Where it's kind of where they're selling things and you can buy anything you want. <laughs> they're selling things. <laughs> you can buy any shirt you want. Chicklets. <laughs> vote, vote. By the way, I did have a. Uh, How well- many times did a woman come up to you with a, with a mannequin with the hair braids? Uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit with that <laughs> one. And I, one of my relatives actually asked one of the little kids that was selling the chicklets once, said, How much for the entire box? And the kid said, Why? He goes, How much for everything? Just all of it. He goes, and the kid goes, uh, two fifty. He goes, if I buy the entire box, we not come around anymore. No, no. I thought this was really good. I thought this was really good by one of my relatives. I said, if I buy the entire box, will you go home and get ready for school the next day? Kid goes, yeah. So he goes, good. I want you. I, here's here. Let me buy the whole box. Go home and get ready for school. So he does it. An hour later. <laughs> we saw the kid again. Of <laughs> course. What kind of rube are you guys? No, I give credit to that kid. That kid was like, how stupid is this white person? Oh my God. Yeah, I'll get ready for school. Whatever you say, Daryl. Si, senor. Give me all your mucho uh, dinero and I'll go is, home. This is what we do. We talk about yeah. zigging and zagging in little moments and doing things for our kids' pocket. It was on that anniversary, 25th anniversary in Cabo. We took the kids. We did a little private cruise, which was awesome. But what do I remember about that trip? I remember one of my kids out in the ocean getting stung by uh, some jellyfish. Yeah, like good jellyfish. That's always fun. And uh, so what do you have to do, Puck, as a dad? You got to pee on it. Got to pee on them. Uh, so you peed Sarah, on your kid. I remember this. We told you the story on the radio. You peed yeah. on your kid. Peed on my kid, and uh, <laughs> it it worked. Took care of the, took care of this thing. I mean, you have to do whatever it takes for your kids. And at that oh, point, man. it felt a little weird. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, but <laughs> hey, you normally see that on on OnlyFans, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't. It, apparently, peeing on someone fetish. Yeah. Well, there, you are. You are multi talented, sir. <laughs> I just wish somebody would have rec- recognized you. Is that Chris Egan? Is he peeing on his kid over there? What is he doing? Whatever it takes. So Whatever happy takes. anniversary to uh, happy anniversary to you and Melanie. Yep, to Melanie. Well, she's the as as my kids would say, she's the glue of the family. Um, yes, she is. And we got a letter from one of our kids, and the, the letter said, "Mom, a, you're the glue." A letter. Well, was, he was at camp, so he wrote a letter. Oh. And so maybe I need to rethink some things. It was like, "Mom, thanks for being the glue." <laughs> Dad, thanks for yelling on the sidelines of all of my games. <laughs> yelling. Uh, I'm motivating is the word. Really? Oh, yeah, that, that you can call it motivating. Yeah, the right. best is when the best is when we do this with Brad Adam. Brad joins us on on uh, on uh, Tuesdays. He does it in the background is of of where he does it is all these like letters or you know Mother's Day, Mom, you're the best. Like you know, pieces of paper that are all up on the wall. It's all about the mom. It, there's not one thing up there about Brad. Not one thing is up there about, thanks, dad. You're the best dad in the world. <laughs> we get no credit. We, we get don't no get credit. any love, Puck. We don't get any love. But all right, get- sir. Uh, well, have fun there in Victoria. Tell, uh, uh, give Austin our best and, uh, and good luck to the, uh, the Edmonton river cats, right? River Hawks, river Hawks, river Hawks, They're the playing river the Hawks. Victoria Harbor cats. 
Oh, the Harbor Cats. Yeah, watch out for the Harbor Cats. And next uh, next week, uh, the uh, West Coast League uh, All Star Game on the MLB Network. So there's... MLB Network. I'll, I'll check it out. All right, there he is, uh, Chris Egan. Uh, his weekly appearance brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. Three locations in Sumner, Downtown Pelham, South Hill, home of the original No Big Dill Pickle Pizza. Uh, visit them at FatZach'sPizza.com. Thank you, sir. Chris Egan, every Friday from the Puck Sports Studios built by Limback Lumber, every Friday with Chris Egan here at Puck Sports and, of course, PuckSports.com.